everyone. Welcome to The Marketing Drip, where we drip tips to scale your business digitally. Abby here, and the topic today is all about recall for dentists and how to work the phone to get patients on the schedule. I'm gonna be talking with Pete Sylvester, the owner at The Recall Pros. Now, Pete has set up call floors and contact centers for 15 years, and he's trained phone reps on how to do everything from customer service, sales, and of course, setting appointments. Over the years, he's found a niche on writing high-performance scripts and taught impactful phone skills to get the highest schedule rate possible. He's taken that knowledge and built his own team of phone reps to focus on scheduling hygiene appointments and new patients from all over the country in every single time zone. The Recall Pros makes outbound calls and sends text messages to past new patients to schedule hygiene appointments and get them directly on the schedule. Let's begin today's drip provided by Digital Resource a full service digital marketing agency that is your resource for everything digital. Yay! <laughs> hey Pete, thank you so much for joining us and dripping some knowledge on us today. Um, I just want to dive right into this and you are such an expert when it comes to phone calls. You run the call center and the recall pros in my experience has been the best. And I appreciate you coming on today and letting us pick your brain. So tell me about why phone calls are so impactful today. Because a lot of times they just get fallen by the wayside. Yeah. Um, you know, and to be honest, the answer is a little bit there in your question is that they have fallen by the wayside. Um, one of the reasons that I find phone calls to be so impactful at, at this stage in business is nobody wants to do it. Nobody wants to pick up that phone and have a conversation. We've come to a, a point where we can multitask and we can send out communication with the click of a button and send out a mass text or send out um, canned emails um, to hundreds and thousands of people every day and wait for them to come back to us. Um, we work in the, in the dental space with small businesses. Communities are built um, and they can sustain one, two, maybe even three dental practices. So what sets them apart in their community? It's picking up that phone and having that relationship with their patients in their area. Um, picking up that phone call does a lot for a practice. It establishes you as somebody who can take the time, get to know their chart, and then speak to them on the phone. It's so much more personal. Um, and as we're moving into a world um that we can more effectively use technology like text and emails, we're losing um, a bit of that that one-on-one -on -one personal connection with our patients. Uh, and that to me is the most impactful and most important part when we make our calls, because ultimately we're delivering the same message. We're just putting emotion and person personal uh, personality behind it. Um, I think yeah. we've all been in a situation where you can open up a text and you lose context and tone just because you're reading words. But when you actually have a person on the phone that's sympathetic or um, excited to get you into the office, it changes that conversation 100% just with that human interaction. Yeah, I love that because it is such a vital part. You don't want to, and I like how you said it is falling at the waistline, right? Like there is people that they're, they focus on one thing. And I, I think the biggest thing that you and I always talk about is you have to have frequency and you have to be available on multiple platforms. You need to have the phone. You can't neglect it. You need to have email. You can't neglect it. You need to have text. You need to have social media. It's a lot. And especially nowadays, it's really hard to retain your team, you know, to really keep people to make sure that they're calling and they are making those touch points. And it really comes down to time. People don't feel like they have time. If they call and then they get a voicemail, it's defeating. But I love how you said this before, you always said this and I love this, is just how it's because when you are leaving for the day, so are they, right? And so like the doctor's leaving at the same time. And I'd love, explain that to me about how, how the recall pros work and how you guys kind of, make it a little different than just a phone yeah. call. Well, you know, the the secret in the sauce or, or what we do that makes us effective, um, more times than not is just when we do our work. It's 
reaching out to people when they're home, when they can look at their calendar, when they're not rushed. And we start all of our dialing at five o'clock in the evening. And then we fi- uh, we'll call up until eight o'clock. Um, we try and follow some guidelines. I, I, I don't like to have my my uh, team of dialers reaching out to people Friday night at 730. Um, <laughs> the responses we get are a little bit different. Probably so for the like, best. I'm at a restaurant or I'm out at the bar right now. Why are you calling me about my teeth? <laughs> um, so we, we try to play with those times as best we possibly can. But um, one of the reasons that we're so effective is we're reaching out to people and acknowledging that they have a life that they need to work on nine to five. And we'll get with you afterwards when your life has settled down a little bit more. Like I said, you can have a conversation. Um, Our phone calls don't have to be three minutes. Hey, when can we get you in and hang up? If there's a conversation that that patient wants to have, we're going to take that time to listen to them, hear if they've got any issues in their mouth, see if they're they're potentially looking for a new dentist. Um, We get a lot of reports back that we you know, learn about somebody being out of a job and and looking for new insurance. But those conversations can be had when a person is um, home and they have the time and they're not in that super focused nine to five. I've got to get my work done. I can't get um, distracted. I've got to, you know, be dialed into work. Nowadays, you know, even my dialers, you can't have your cell phone at your workplace because it's too much of a distraction. Mm -hmm. So, when you think about it, dialing in the nine to five is kind of like sending an email to a, a general inbox and your stuff is going to get flagged as spam. So right. it's working with them. That's a great yeah, comparison. It's, it's like working, you're working in, in the hours of operation of a human being, not just a business. Absolutely. And it, like you said, it is that personal touch, right? So you want to make sure that they are, it's people, it's human. It's the human touch of all of it that I, you know, email, we add photos, right? And that is the emails that we can, or that's the personal touch you can do. Videos can do that as well. But with phone calls, that is an opportunity when they answer, but you've got to take it as an opportunity. You also want to make sure that people are, whoever you're, is calling from your office is representing your office, is able to, in a sense, close, right? They're able to have that conversation give that human experience like they would in the office, but also get them on the schedule. That's the whole point of the call, the call in the first place. And I always love that about you guys is the fact that I've had offices before and they're now a client of yours. And they've said, you know, I, I'm trying to get Debbie to do, I'm just going to use a name. I'm going to trying to get Debbie to make all these calls, but they're not, we're not booking appointments, but she's spending so much time on it. It's like, well, have you done any training? Does she have a script? Like, is there any direction? But Debbie also has to not only call people, but take the calls that come in. She's also got to check people in at the front. She's got to make sure that her insurance is covering all of their patients. There's so many, sometimes it's HR. Sometimes they are making sure that the rest of the team is okay. And they're taking complaints or what have you, right? And that is so much that can be on a person's plate. And that's why I think it's always important to partner up with companies that know how to do it. Um, But of course, with you guys, you know this, right? You know that the phone is very important. So what type of, because people might be watching and being like, okay, sure, you're just saying that phones work. But like, what type of results do you see with your guys' tactics? Yeah, so... Um, one, we were just talking before our, our call, yeah. um, we just onboarded an office in the past about six weeks and we actually got a call yesterday thinking about suspending our services because we're accomplishing our, our work too efficiently. <laughs> um, the dentist looked over our reports and, and, and said, you know, you've booked, uh, we, we ended up booking 57 appointments in six weeks, oh um, of calendar days of calendar days. Um, when I went back and I went and pulled the call reports and, and showed the dentist, you know, the days that we called, um, because we were able to get through a list so um, efficiently, um, we ended up only calling seven days of actual dialing in that six week span. And the dentist just said, you know, why am I paying you guys to do this? If, if it seems so simple, why isn't my staff doing it? Well, you had an open schedule before, we just filled it and the way we were able to do that, um, quite honestly, was just going through accounts that had never been dialed. 
um, the the reps and the office, or I shouldn't even call them the reps, the the dental um, staff, their phones are not their number one priority. Like you said, they've got a million different tasks to do. And the phone is the last resort of, hey, I don't know what to do left with my day. We've got some openings I'm going to dial. Or it's all hands on deck. Our schedule has completely fallen apart. Um, so everybody get on the phone and start dialing between that nine to five. And then the dentist or the staff feels depleted because we've went out, we've done, we spent all this time on the phone. We put people on the phones that are not normally on the phone and we didn't get the results that we wanted. Well, we're coming in, we're dialing. That's all we do. We're a hundred percent dedicated to the phone. So when we're dialing, we're dialing 25 dials in an hour. I've never walked into an office and seen somebody who's completely dedicated to the phones. They've always got five other tasks and the phones are, are part of their responsibility, but they're never a hundred percent focused on that list. So when we can get in there and we can start reaching out to these um, patients, we always see that first month, a gigantic spike in scheduling. We work on everything as far as like goals. We don't guarantee any appointments because we can't guarantee somebody's going to pick up the phone. Um, so we work 100% goal-based and we only bill for, for the work that we accomplish. So if we schedule five appointments, the bill's for five appointments. If the bill, if we schedule 50, then the bill's for 50. You're never going to have that with your staff in the office. Um, and so their attitude is, I'm going to check, I'm going to punch my clock, I'm going to get in dials, whether that's five an hour or that's 25 an hour, they're just going to sit there and they're going to make their their quota for the day. I have to hold my staff to a very, very strict dials per hour because that's how we are efficient in their, in their, um, their evening's worth of work. I can always gauge how successful an agent is going to be when I look at the number of dials per hour. And we keep that mark around 25. I have been in some extremely large call centers in 15 years, and I have watched even the best sales reps say that they are just hammered on the day because they've just been on the phone all day long. And then we pull the reports and it's like, hey, buddy, you've made 10 calls this hour. I know you think you've had a really hard day, but you made 10 calls and you had five conversations with the person sitting next to you. So they're just not efficient. They're not getting through that list. So um, that's another big part of why we're able to be so successful for an office is when you're putting out 25 dials an hour and you have two reps on a recare list, we're going to get 50 calls out. I have some um, offices that their recall list is. 400 patients. We can get that done in less than a week. That's never going to get done, you know, at the practice level. They're going to end up maybe getting 30 to 40, maybe 100 a month where we can get that done in, in two days. That is amazing. And the fact that you guys even have, you charge per patient books. Let, to me, that's brilliant to be like, you know, as far as full-time employees, it's it's an assistance too, right? So you're not paying for another full-time employee. You're just paying for the results. And that to me is you're, you're guaranteeing what you, because you're that confident about it and you're that confident in the phones to be able to make those appointments to get them on the books and really make sure that those practices are filling their schedules. That's that's incredible. And I mean, as far as your experience too, Pete, because you go way back to recall, not just in dental, you go, or not recall, you go way back in call centers and not just in recall, but what do you typically find that practices are missing in their recall approach? It's the time. It's a hundred percent the time and the dedication to it. Um, it's, I, I've never had uh, an office come to me and say, we need help with recare we've got three people dialing nonstop and it's not working. Um, at the end of the day, it, it comes down to dedication to fixing that one problem of filling the, the hygiene schedule. Um, I've never seen an office do it effectively where they had their hygienist call when there are when they're holes in their schedule um, or there's holes in the schedule coming up in the next couple of weeks. Um, this needs to be somebody's number one priority. Um, the number one problem with that, though, is like you said, it, it's staffing. There are offices that need help with recare, but they can't justify bringing somebody on to dial for a week out of the month or 
you know, and, and that's booking 55 appointments that it, it, we have offices that have goals as low as 10 to 15. So at that point, there's really no need to bring somebody in full time to dial for your office. It doesn't make any sense financially, where when we can come in and we can offer it on work that we actually accomplish, I, I can't imagine any business, not just in dental, but any business in general to say, hey, you have staff doing a, a job. Um, and they're juggling 15 tasks, why don't you let us take one off their plate and we'll only bill you for the work that we accomplish? Um, oftentimes, I, I think offices forget that there's going to be spans of time where appointments aren't booked and it can feel very, very wasteful um, when you're in the office. I think even my staff can feel it sometimes where they can end up booking an appointment in the first five minutes of dialing in an hour then they'll go 55 minutes and they may not book another appointment. They just hit a dead end list of numbers. And then the first 55 minutes of the next hour, they can hit the same number of voicemails and then book an appointment at the end. So you're like, well, I booked one appointment an hour. That's true. But I also had almost two hours in between where I didn't book an appointment. Nobody in a dental office has two hours to kill. Um they're going to look at it and say, I could have been doing all these other projects instead of dialing for two hours. But the reality is you may have just ripped through 50 phone numbers. That's a lot of work that's accomplished. And, and people don't give the dialers enough credit um, that there is some very dedication, uh, very dedicated work that has to happen to just sit down and, and dial, dial, dial. Um, there's some stamina behind that because you can burn out real quick. Um, so yeah, there, there's a lot to be said there about the fact that we're able to just do work uh, and bill for the work accomplished instead of, you know, the offices don't see all the work in between of how many times uh, one of my agents just gets voicemail after voicemail after voicemail. So um, they oftentimes that's forgotten. But at the end of the day, the, the biggest reason that the hygiene schedule isn't full is it's not the number one priority of at least one employee say that it's so true because everybody needs focus everybody needs to have and that's why you know if there's office managers that are or anybody on the front team that's listening to this and they're thinking like i'm trying my best like don't don't it's not you failing you're not failing it's you have so many roles to take on and you can't be great at everything. You can be good at everything, but you can't be great. Be great at one thing. Find that niche and really go after it and team up with people that can do it. And I think of this for like social media, for instance, right? Like when people come to us and they, they're like, oh, my front team is doing that. I'm like, they're doing that too? Like, are you kidding me? What aren't they doing? They're, and how effective is it? And why is it going to – or maybe we'll think of that down the road. And I'm sure you hear this too, as far as like phone calls, like we'll do that down the road, you push it off. But what's going to change in that time frame, right? Like that person to your very point is going to get burned out because they're in over their head. And there's just, unless that's their focus, unless you have that person in the office that is dedicated to making sure they have the phones and they are doing the call out because the instinct for anybody is new patients. I've got to get new. And absolutely, you have to be able to maintain your attrition and make sure that your company has new bodies coming in. But don't forget about the new people you paid for. And now they're just sitting there waiting and busy that they don't want to find a new dentist. They don't want to look and see what else is out there. They want to just keep coming back to you. But you have to make it easy. You have to be accessible through text message, through email, through social media, through your website, the booking online, through the phone, when you call at the right hour and the right day with the right tone and the right script to make sure that they feel like they're taken care of and that you have their back. So no, it's not a fail or a miss on anybody in the office. It's how in the heck do you think you're supposed to be doing all that and you're going to be doing it right and effectively? I appreciate you and I don't know how you do it every day. That's amazing. <laughs> um, but yeah, to your very point, it's focus and dedication and making sure that there is somebody that they know when they come in every day, I'm going to be on the phones and I'm going to call and I'm going to book out the schedule. And they got to do that every day. <laughs> and they got that same mentality. Because just because you booked out next month, doesn't mean the other month is booked out and the other month, like you have to make sure it's a constant recurring battle that you that you face. Um, that's the role of the business because <laughs> you are a business at the end of the day. But that's 
that being said too, okay, so you said time. Is there any other tricks that you think really gets patients to book appointments over the phone? And before you answer this 2P, I want to drive this home because I love you guys do this too. You understand management softwares. So I think that's what's really unique about your team. You're not just like, oh, there's availabilities. You're actually booking them. You understand the management softwares and you're actually filling their schedule literally live. Like, I think that's amazing. But going back, what are some tricks to get those appointments booked over the phone? Yeah, um, those management softwares. I, you know, I I had a pretty good conversation with (laughs) uh, an office manager yesterday that said, you know, you guys put somebody in the wrong column on accident. I said, Hey, I'm so sorry, but please understand we're working five different dental softwares and we work your office one day a week. Like if we put somebody in the wrong column, we will call and we will fix it. But yeah, no, we're putting those appointments live into those, um, into the the schedule right when we're on the phone. But the software is also what allows us to better schedule these patients because we're able to reference the notes. And that's a little bit of the nuance that's lost in a text or an email. Um, those are great. I, I don't want anybody to ever think that my view is that those should go away because those are super, super important. Um, I just don't want the phone, the people who respond best to the phone to ever get left by the wayside. But, um, you know, I've, I've listened to phone calls where a, a patient will say, hey, you know, I can't come in because I haven't had a chance to look at my work schedule. So they give you that excuse. Well, the next time my agents call, they're going to pick up that phone and they're going to say, hey, Kevin, uh, last time we called you, you said you didn't have your work schedule in front of you. I'm calling you, you know, a week later, like you asked, um, how does your schedule look? Being able to build off of that last conversation creates instant credibility. And the patients almost have a little bit of you caught me attitude, like, oh, that was my excuse last week. I can't give you the same excuse this week, or I can't give you the same excuse the next month. You know, um, hey, we looked through our last conversation. It looks like you were at a football game. Hope you hope your kid won. Acknowledge, build off of that. Be part of their life. Be part of their community. And that's what brings them back in is they feel like they're being taken care of. So, yes, we have some I'm going to call it generic messaging, uh, you know, just that we use for every office. But at the same time, it's building off of the information that's in that chart. Um, so that we can best feel like we're part of of the office, but make that person feel like an individual and not just, um, mm. you know, another call on the list. Yeah, if you're getting the opportunity to have that human aspect, that human element, then be a human. <laughs> like, I, that's such a good point. It's it's sometimes it might get missed because you're just going phone after phone call. If you are going after like, hey, we need to fill it. Here's a list of 400 people. Let's go. Every time you pick up that phone, you have to smile and remember that this person hasn't heard you talking to the other 30 people that you might have talked to today. This is their first talking and their their first pain or touch point with you. So you have to make sure it's authentic and you have to just really, I think it's taking a deep breath, smiling and saying, okay, who are we talking to next, right? Like, ooh, I got to talk to Lucy and she's got three kids and da 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 Oh, I remember Lucy when she came in here, she told me about the festival she went to and blah, 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 right? Like it's, it's remembering why you're doing it. And it's really to touch point with all these people and have that experience and have that relationship. And I think the mentality going into those calls really helps you too to like, you feel good. You know, you might not, (laughs) it's like the build up before, like, Oh, I don't want to do this. But then once you do it, you're like, why did, why was I so hesitant? That was so nice to talk to that person. And like, be able to engage when they're nice. Sure. You're going to get calls <laughs> when it's not someone's best day, but I, it's that empathy, right? Like you have no idea what their day has been like and trying to understand and be accommodating is always helpful. Like it's a person on the other end. <laughs> Remember that. <laughs> and that's always helpful. Yep. And in, in the world of, of call centers, I would have to say this is the nicest group of people to call. Um, We're not making a cold sales call. We're calling a patient that has trusted you enough to open their mouth and let (laughs) them work in their mouth. They want to hear from us. Um, Oftentimes they don't realize that we're calling, you know, from the dentist because they don't recognize our number because we purchase a phone number and we set up the caller ID. So it, it appears that the office is calling, but if they don't have our phone number memorized in their phone, 
they're not going to necessarily recognize us mm-hmm. right away. And one of my favorite um, interactions is when somebody picks up the phone and is like, please stop calling me. I don't want to talk about my car warranty. <laughs> and you can hear the pause from the agent and they say, I'm more than happy to take you off my call list, but I'm just letting you know <laughs> this is your dentist. And instantly, instantly that conversation <laughs> changes. They become apologetic. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Yes, I I know I need to come in. That's usually the first <laughs> phrase right after you said, hey, I'm the dentist. Oh, I know I need to come in. I've been putting it off. I haven't taken calls. And when they say, I know I need to come in, that indicates to me, yep, I know you emailed yep. me. I know you text me and yep. I didn't reply. But now you called me. You've got me live on the phone. I have to give you a response. You know, I've already avoided you. <laughs> you That's me. why you called me. Okay, yeah, I'm just going to schedule it. Let's get it in. Uh, you know, and as the year goes on, we have a little bit more leverage when we we're able to look at insurance. We can just say to people, hey, you know, you get two cleanings a year. We want to get this in before you lose your benefit. But again, that's part of reading mm-hmm. into a chart and making uh, having that person understand that we see them as a person and not just a checkbox mm-hmm. on a mass send, because there's nothing personal about that mass mm-hmm. text. You know, there's nothing personal about that email. Besides, it might say their name, but we both know that that's just an autofill. Um, But to be able to acknowledge the person as an individual changes that interaction 100%. And at the end of the day, it's human to human. Yeah, absolutely. I I love that. (laughs) Don't call me. Take me off your... Oh, it's my dentist. Oh, I I have time to talk to you. (laughs) That's okay. (laughs) I love that. So... Yeah, nobody wants to be rude to the person that's going to be in their mouth. (laughs) <laughs> right. And I love that it's like guilt. It's instant guilt, which obviously, you know, that's a negative tone. We don't want that. But at the same time, that's what happens. They're like, oh, you know, I'm sorry. I, I, yes, I need to do this. I'll just get it over and done with. Let, give me on the schedule and let, let's, let's make sure we're going yep. <laughs> forward and I'm Absolutely. easy to book that way. Um, I love that. What do you recommend for I mean, you've said a lot of great ideas so far. You talked about time and just really understanding and giving that human aspect, saying the right thing. But what do you recommend for practices to implement today to help increase appointments? If you were looking to just do this on your own, um, I would say pick two nights a week and have an agent dial yeah. until 730 Uh, maybe not all the way to eight, but till 7.30, have an agent stay in the office for two, uh, maybe two or three extra hours, but two days a week and um, monitor the outbound work. Um, There's a certain amount of babysitting that everybody feels like has to happen, but you need to, you need to run that call um, agent um, like a call floor, very regimented. This is the number of dials I need to have out. Um, you know, have a conversation about, um, like you said, smiling on the phone. It is very, very easy to get somebody on the phone and you can hear they don't want to be at work. Mm -hmm. You know, you can hear they don't want to be at work. So to have a happy, friendly person calling between the hours of five and seven 30, I would tell you, we'll do, um, amazing things for any office just having that person there. Oh, that is gold. I love that. That's brilliant. Well, what opportunities do you think doctors are missing out on? Specifically doctors. Um, I think doctors are missing, you know, looking at their patient list, understanding that, and not every dentist is like this. Some dentists lose sight that hygiene is going to fill their treatments. Um, I, I, we should have some information that I've sent over talking about, I think half of every office's active patient list hasn't been in, in uh, a year. You, you know, practices work and work and work to get new patients. You know this uh, better than anybody, but more times than not, once they come in for that first appointment or even that second appointment, they just kind of fall off because, you know, when they leave the hygiene chair, um, to the best effort of the hygienist to get them scheduled for their next appointment, they just fall off. Um, And the more I do this and the more uh, office managers I talk to, it's everybody is just so overworked and understaffed. Um, Yesterday I was on with 
an, an office that we've been working with for a while. And that office manager had to do demos, at least three demos on um, uh, some programs for imaging. Okay. And then she was looking at a new dental practice software and she had mm-hmm. two people from her call uh, center in the office quit. And then she had oh. to hire four more hygienists. Like there's just so much to be done oh. that by the time we were done with the conversation and we were talking about adding unscheduled treatment plan calls to their account, um, she had said to me, you know, we don't call anybody for almost 60 days. If they have, if they've come in for a treatment plan, uh, it's been signed up for, but they never scheduled it. We, we wait 60 days. And I, I just said, you know, why are you not telling these people that you have a problem in your mouth? And if you don't get this fixed, it will only continue to get worse. Mm-hmm. That, that's, there's nothing that you can dispute about that. If you've got a problem in your mouth, it's going to get worse. Right. Why are you waiting 60 days? It must not be much of a, a, a problem. Yeah. And she just said, we don't have time. We don't have time to sit down on the phone and make these dials because we're so short staffed. We've got so many different things to do. And I don't think that a good chunk of dentists understand the list of projects that their staff has to do. And because of that, they are missing out on uh, a full hygiene schedule and they're missing out on treatments that should be coming in month over month over month just simply for the fact that they have patients that haven't been in and they have issues in their mouth. Um, It is very common for us to call patients to say, hey, you're past due for a cleaning. And they'll just say to us, hey, we're not gonna come in for a cleaning because we have a filling that we need scheduled. We have some pain in our mouth and I'd like to get that taken care of. That person never called in. The only way that that dentist ever found out about that issue is because an outbound call was made. Mm -hmm. So, you know, by not using uh, an outreach program with a phone call, they're missing a lot of information uh, and the health status of most of their patients. Yeah. And that's the main purpose of providers, right, is taking care of the patients. And it can it can easily get forgotten because of the demand and the, to your very point, the overworking, the understaffed, too many things to do and too little time to do it. I, I love that you gave that example too. I literally just had a call yesterday um, with an office manager as well. And she was saying the same thing. Like, I just, I don't have time. I don't have time to send out emails. I don't have time to look at what's going on. And I'm like, you shouldn't have to. That's like, the, the, you need to focus on making it easy for the patients. To, and that's the thing nowadays, you don't have to. Like, it's not your traditional practice anymore where we have paper files all in the envelopes stacked behind you and you have to go through and take a stack out and call everybody. It's not that way anymore. There's technology out there. You just got to be open to it and, and, and make sure to implement it into your practice to take that workload off of your team. Because although it's understaffed, there are so many softwares, there's so many businesses out there like you guys that actually can take off that workload. Um, Same as like your appointment reminders and don't take time on the phone to do those things that the text messages are effective. Or if you have a list of 2000 people that have been proposed treatment, blast them on email and text to get those call lists down. So then when you call, those people are more attentive because they like the phone call. If people want to book online, if they want to be able to do it through a text, everybody communicates differently. Everybody acts differently. And there's no way you could possibly know that with all of your patients. It, in, in your data, you can have it in your management software. But when you're working at the speed that you need to be working at and the little team that you have, you have to rely on computers to do it. You have to rely on automations and softwares that connect with your management software that feed out those instant communications about recall, about treatment plan follow-up through email and text. And then having a phone call on top of that, you are addressing everybody with the little time that you have and the little team that you have, but you're actually impacting all the patients. And if you're an online scheduler on top of that, they can book it online instantly you're set for success. Like no matter how that person wants to book, they will do it through your practice. And that's all you're doing is making it easy. And to your very point, this person was in pain and wasn't even reaching out because it, it's guilt again. Like they feel bad. I'm either scared of the dentist. I've been avoiding it for so long. And now 
uh, I feel stupid for being in pain this long, but I don't know. I, the longer it goes, the more stupid I feel about calling and telling you guys that I've waited this long and you're going to make me feel silly, you know, and I don't want to feel that way, but you're in pain and you need to call and act. To me, that says the practice isn't making it easy for that person to act. And there's so many resources to do that, but you've just got to reach out and figure out what's best for your practice. I say all of it because you don't know which patient's which, but it, it's all going to be effective simultaneously together. And that's just what you need. Easy as. <laughs> yeah, I 100% agree with you. I think text, email, uh, and phones, they're all effective in their exactly. own right with the right kind of person. Uh, I would never tell any practice, ditch your text, go right. exclusively to phone. That would be a silly idea. But what I see is a lot of offices are going to, hey, all I worry about with, with recare is I send out a text, I send out an email, I send out a postcard. I checked my boxes. Um, and then that's it. Um, <laughs> like, no, remember, you didn't get a bit. <laughs> yep. Yep. I remember I, uh, I, I was working with an office in Virginia um, a couple years ago and the office manager reached out to me and she said, hey, I, don't, I just don't know what else to do. Um, my staff has told me that they work the recare list as much as they possibly can. They're asking me for advice. I don't have anything more, so I thought I would give you guys a shot. So we got them all onboarded. Um, and then in the first evening, we ended up booking, I think, 15 appointments in the, in the first night. And the next day, we had a, a, a follow-up to see how things went. And the dentist asked, you know, what? what was the difference? We, one night I ended up with this, you know, all these appointments, what did you do any different? And I, I had to show him and this, I always find to be kind of interesting. If the employee says they did it, a lot of office managers and dentists will just take their word for it because they don't have time. And to be quite honest, a lot of office managers and dentists don't know how to even pull their own recare. List. Right. They put that on the responsibility of the employee. Yeah. And I said, you know, we pulled up your list and no one on your list has been called in six months, mm. period. So you've reached a point where you've been texting, emailing and postcards for six months and you have an open schedule. Yes, you are getting some appointments, but you are not using all of your resources. Therefore, you're not getting everyone in. Yeah. Um, and that office, I think like 80% of the people that picked up that phone schedule the appointment. They just needed somebody to call them. And more importantly with that office, it was in a small town. Mm. So they wanted the human interaction. Um, I always crack up a little bit when I hear the recordings and a, uh, a patient says like, I can't wait to come into the office and meet you. Oh. Because they just feel like they're talking to somebody that's in the back room. Yeah. Um, all of our dialers are here in Utah. Um, we don't outsource that call, um, service outside of the country. And, um, it's just very much appreciated that they feel like they're speaking to somebody who could be living next door. And they think they are like, I love that. Oh, yeah. I'll see you when I come in. It's like, yes, you will. <laughs> I might be in right, the back. Right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. When we do our onboarding calls, we ask all sorts of questions like, what are the instructions that you give your patients when they say, I haven't been to the office in 18 months? Can you give me some clarification? Mm. So we find that same verbiage. If the office says we're on the corner of Michigan and uh, 7th Street, but we're right behind a Burger King in a big white building, we want to say the same thing. Yeah. We want to be that extension of the office. Yes. So, you know, every office has a spec sheet with all that information, the address, the, the specific instructions, the exact way that the office refers to the dentist. Um, do any of the hygienists have, you know, nicknames that the staff or that the patients know them by? We are a part of the office. We are a virtual assistant. So we become a part of the staff and we become part of the culture. And that's one of the biggest things I think that sets us apart and allows us to better schedule is because we, we come off as part of that cultured community that they, that they're used to coming into. Yeah. Well, clearly it works 15 appointments in one night. That's crazy. And I think the moral of today's episode is really just tapping into a da database that isn't tapped yet. And even if it's being said that it is really look in and see what's going on 
reach out to other resources. To your point, 15 appointments in one night, that's amazing. We've seen that too with emails just by tapping in. We could get 36 appointments just by reaching out to people that don't have appointments booked and they're overdue. It's about taking advantage of who has already been in the practice. So when they are new patients, they stay with you, they become loyal, and you need to make sure that you have every resource available for them to book that appointment. So Pete, thank you so much for talking with me today. It's always such a joy to talk to you and pick your brain. And thank all of you for tuning in. If you wanna learn more about getting your schedule full, have Pete and his team take care of you by calling them at 720-927-6756. You can also schedule a 15 minute discovery call with Pete by clicking the link provided or visit their website at therecallpros.com. Pete is also such a loyal partner of ours in the Recall Pros that if you could actually mention the podcast, he will schedule eight free appointments and waive the setup fee of $299 an overall value of $499. Yeah. Thank you, Pete. That's awesome. So take advantage of everyone. Mention, <laughs> mention the marketing drip and I'll see you guys next time. Bye guys. Bye.